In December 2022, I won my first 100 mile race. It was actually 102 miles, and there's one big thing out of all the things I did that I think made the biggest difference in me winning that race, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. I just want to make something clear. When I say when I say I won my first 100 mile race, I had ran this race three times, and so it took me three tries before I won it. I didn't even finish it the first time. I only made it 66 miles, and so I stayed committed until I finally broke the course record, and then a year later someone broke the course record. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what records are for. They're meant to be broken. And I want to really zero in on the thing that made the base difference for me in order to win that race. And we could get into specifics of training, and I'd love to talk about the training I put in and pull up Strava data and show how, show people how much I was running. There's there's one thing that doesn't even have to do with like the physical training that really made a difference. Because over the course of three years, I was thinking about this race. And the biggest thing that helped me, I'll share it right now, the biggest thing that helped me win this race was the conversation in my head. I could talk about the leg training workouts or the speed work I did, but when I won this race, I had already ran 50 miles this, this you know, the week of this race, and I had ran a 10K every day in November leading up to this race. I think I ran 11 miles the day before the 100 mile race. So from a physical perspective, I wasn't necessarily doing what was optimal. I didn't have a taper. Um, I didn't have a rest day the day before. I probably ran more than I should have the day before. And so when it comes to physical, that stuff is just not as important in my mind. Like, I, I, I love what the Iron Cowboy says. He says this, you know, like, Iron Man's or training like that is both physical and it's mental. It's not more mental than physical, it's both. And I agree. I just know, even if you're not physically in the best position, the mental can override that. And I've experienced that. And so over the course of three years, this is one of the things that I, I started to develop over time is is asking myself questions to help me understand that it's possible. So listen, you if you like positive affirmations, I'm not here to knock on that. I'm just telling you when you're when I feel bad or I have a training run and I just don't want to do it and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I don't like if I'm like I feel great, I feel amazing, it doesn't work for me because I like it's not true. It feels like I'm lying to myself, right? So there's time for affirmations and I have those. I just like these these open-ended questions that get me to think about what's possible. As an example, if I'm like staring at myself in the mirror, I would ask myself something like, "Well, what how would I feel after I finish this run?" Or what's it what's how am I going to be able to motivate people if I skip out on this run? Things like that, like these questions that get me to think a little bit more opposed to just trying to beat my negative thoughts into submission. And maybe there's a time and place for that. I just I just like these open-ended questions because it gets me to think outside of the box. And so this is the big thing that helped me over the course of three years, going from my first 100-mile race, not even finishing it, to setting the course record at the time, is asking myself these good, solid questions get, that got me to think outside of the box. Things like, what would it feel like if I won this? How cool would it be if I, I won this race uh, before 24? you know, what What kind of impact would I be able to have if I was able to demonstrate it doesn't matter what age or how long you've been running and you can still win, right? And and these things, the, the cool thing about open-ended questions is there's no right answer. It's just, it just opens up your perspective and helps you think outside of the box. And that was the most valuable thing because even in the negative moments, or even if I was talking in my own head about the things that sucked, like dropping out of the first race, like if I dropped out of that race or when I dropped out of the race, I was sitting there being like, well, you know, is this the path I should take? Like, is this a waste of time? Like feeling pretty defeated. And the conversation in my head at that time was like, yeah, but how much cooler of a story is it if you, if you're, if you go from dropout DNF to to winning the race, right? Like that question in my head would inspire me to want to get after it, right? And so if there's something you can take away from this video is find questions you can turn to when things are bad that inspire some sort of positive emotion. If, if affirmations work for you, great, keep at it. 
it just doesn't work for me. And so I, I've started to focus on how to ask myself better questions to open up my mind. Is What if this is possible? What would it be like if this happened? How would this influence the world? Things like that. I can feel an emotion when I'm asking myself that. I can feel this like fire. And that does me much better than any sort of statement of like, I feel great, especially when I don't feel great. It just it just feels like a lie. I'd, I'd love to get into the training and things like that, but this is the thing that I think made the biggest difference. Because yes, I, I got after training, but and, and I trained really hard for three years, but the thing that got me to training was asking myself these questions that made me want to get out there, that inspired me to get after it. And that was the thing that was the most important when it came to me winning this 100-mile race and then setting a 50-mile a course record later. I hope you get something out of that, and I love this type of conversation. I could talk about training, but the mindset, the mental game is the thing that's most interesting to me and the thing I continue to work on every day. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If not, that's cool with me. I hope it's valuable either way, and I look forward to seeing you sometime in the next video or out on the trails. Peace.